Hi, my name is Ed Loftus. I'm a gastroenterologist who specializes in inflammatory bowel disease. And I wanted to talk to you today about an article that appeared in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. This was from a French group, and they were looking at patients with either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis who were on a drug called adalimumab, also known as Humira. And they were looking at specifically the patients who were on the standard dose of 40 milligrams subcutaneous every other week and who were not doing well. And they went ahead in this group of roughly 100 patients, they checked levels of the adalimumab, so levels of the actual drug right before they're supposed to get the next dose, and also antibodies to adalimumab. And based on that profile, they could group the patients into three groups, either patients that had therapeutic levels of adalimumab, patients who had low levels of adalimumab but no antibodies to the drug, and patients who had low levels of adalimumab who did have antibodies to the drug. All the patients underwent what they called dose optimization. So if they weren't doing well on every other week, their dose was escalated to 40 milligrams subcutaneously weekly. If they still didn't do well on that dose, ultimately they were put on a different anti-TNF drug called infliximab, also known as Remicade. And based on those original three profiles I was talking about, they could sort of predict how patients were going were gonna to do. And what happened was, amongst the patients who had the low drug level but no antibodies to the drug, those patients did best during the phase where the dose of the adalimumab was doubled when it went from every other week to weekly. And that kind of makes sense. Whereas the patients who already had antibodies to the drug they didn't do well with dose optimization. And the patients who already had a therapeutic level of the drug and weren't doing well, they didn't do so hot either. And then in the second part of the study, when they went on infliximab, the patients who did the best were the patients who had the low drug levels but already had antibodies to the adalimumab. When they went on infliximab, they did much better. The group that seemed to do the worst overall was that first group I talked about who had therapeutic levels of adalimumab. So despite having therapeutic levels of an anti-TNF drug, these patients were symptomatic and it didn't matter whether you increased the dose of the adalimumab or gave them infliximab, 90% of them did not do well. And so based on this pharmacokinetic profile, if you will, you could group people into three groups and sort of predict how to treat them. So in my own practice, if I have a patient not doing well on adalimumab, I check a trough level in antibodies. If they have a low level of drug, no antibodies, I increase the dose of adalimumab. If they have a low level drug but they have antibodies, we switch them to a different anti-TNF drug. If they already have a therapeutic dose of adalimumab and yet they're not doing well, then you probably need to switch out of class to a different drug with a different mechanism of action, and that might be an anti-integrin antibody or something along those lines. And so this is the future of IBD. We're going to see this more and more with all of our biologic drugs, the ability to check trough levels, antibodies to the drug, and then make rational, evidence-based decisions on how to manage these patients. This concept is very similar to a paper that we did here at Mayo several years ago where we profiled people based on their infliximab levels and you could predict how well they would do with different strategies. Thank you very much.